AI can be thought of as falling into three types based on the overall structure. And that means likewise, artificial and intelligent robots can fall into those same categories. And you're looking at it by the dimensions of scope of intelligence, system complexity, and end user interaction. The three categories are element, is it an element, an algorithm, a subsystem? Is it an independent or turnkey system? So you might think of that as a robot for a particular application. And the third, is it a joint cognitive system? We'll talk a little bit more. That term will make more sense in a minute. So if we think about an element, which is an algorithm or subsystem, the intelligence to produce an algorithm is usually the computation is producing an exceptional but a, a narrow scale or result. The system complexity in terms of a programming system is pretty small because it's really typically producing a, a specific output binary or it's producing something that's going to something else. There's no end user interaction per se. I mean, you don't really get things where you're tweaking with a, a regular users and just tweaking with the algorithm on the fly. They, they may reject it, they may, uh, they may accept it or reject it, but that's different. So we see some examples of that, you know, for AI systems, anything that's, uh, you know, our, our route planners are giving us navigation, uh, uh, ground avoid avoidance for jets, target detection for the military, uh, Bayesian forecasting models, those are all examples. If we think of that for robotics, we see the object recognition, collision avoidance, uh, ability for drones to track people, simultaneous localization and mapping, those are big algorithms. And when we think about what that means for robotics, elements are, are really important, but we tend to have them a bit narrow or brittle. They, they may be hard to transfer to new applications, and there's always the possibility that the end users will reject them. My favorite examples in robotics are from the Terminator with that dialogue tree where they respond to the landlord, and of course the original Westworld where the thermal imaging uh, is what the robot's using to find uh, the, the protagonist and he figures it out and is able to hide behind a torch. An independent system or a turnkey system that's kind of a, uh, for a robot, uh, that's just basically what we think of as the whole robot. The intelligence for that's usually built from one or more elements of intelligence that are coupled together with components like user interface or a robot body. And that's going to produce results, again, for a well-specified problem domain. The system complexity here is generally not so much uh, a function of the software, it's a function of the software and the hardware and the application. And the application may be in a very challenging environment where lots of things are happening. Uh, and you can see combinations of the different uh, elements there. The end user interaction, the end user is usually restricted. Uh, the human is interacting through an interface or rigid protocols. Uh, we see that, for example, with uh, AI systems like traveling schedulers or logistics planners or recommender systems. You can do a little tweaking, but not a lot. It's, it's only there to do one thing, hopefully do that well. Uh, but it has to pull together more than one type of element to do that. Now in robotics, we see that with warehousing robotics. Uh, there, the end user isn't, isn't really directly interacting, you're trying to minimize the interaction with people. Drone mapping, the same thing. Drone goes up, zip, 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 you know, around and takes it. Drone delivery, again, trying to avoid people, uh, having to interact with them. The whole design is not to have any type of interaction. A COVID disinfecting robots that were so popular in hospitals and security guards and robot delivery, very well specified interactions, very well-specified roles and expectations as to what they're going to do and what kind of environments they're going to be working in. Uh, that means for robotics, uh, 
We're good at algorithms mostly. So those modules are elements though. We may not pull them together very well. The integration may be buggy and have side effects. And we see that that lean startup, the uh, minimal viable product, often favors someone working on an element not making the system work well. But my favorite robots uh, for uh, for turnkey systems was Wally -E and Eve. They're both supposed to press a button, they go off and do what they're supposed to do and come back. Joint cognitive systems are when you have one or more systems that are, are coupled with additional social intelligence because they're supporting a human AI, human robot interaction for a well-specified program domain. So a joint cognitive system, the human is engaged somewhere directly engaged. It's usually a task that requires uh, both of us to do, both types of agents. The system complexity is quite high because it's requiring a true human interaction. And the end user interaction is very fluid. Uh, we're partitioning roles, you do this, I do that. Oh, something's happened, I now take control of the car. Those types of things we see. We see those in the pilot aircraft uh, designs. We see that in autonomous driving designs where the driver is supposed to hand over control to the robot and then the, the car gives it back. If it runs into a problem, the person, of course, is supposed to be aware and able to respond quickly. But we also see these in healthcare assistive robots, the, the ones that are going to take care of our elders for us. Uh, we see also robot surgery like the da Vinci. There's a person, a doctor, a very skilled doctor who's working a very skilled set of devices. Um, lethal autonomous weapons, there's a human in the loop there. So the ramifications for robotics is that we often see developers ignore this and assume that they're developing some sort of independent system, you know, that easier one, and how it works on the larger scale and whether it all comes together uh, isn't their job which is not a great attitude to take because it may in fact be their job. They may be legally liable, even if it doesn't look like it initially. Uh, I think Megan, uh, the horror movie, I know it's a horror movie, but I think it really knocked it out of the park for going through some of the problems you see with those kinds of interactions. But uh, Robot and Frank has a good healthcare robot in there. And of course, we've got the lovable robots for Star Wars. So that gives an overview of three categories of AI based on its intelligence, the system complexity, the end user interaction, and also how that means for intelligent robots.